Hi there, I'm Joel in here by name and this is Nursing Tutorials with Joel. In today's video, we'll be talking about dysrhythmias or sometimes called arrhythmias. Now, dysrhythmias, they are disease conditions, they are not normal. Alright, what are dysrhythmias? Dysrhythmias are abnormalities of heart rates or heart reading, which occurs as a result of abnormal generation or conduction of impulses. Now, when we say uh, when we talk about rates, heart rates, we are talking about the number of heartbeats per minute. Normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute, and we call that sinus rhythm. That is meaning that it originates from the sinoatrial node at the rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. Now, when we talk of heart rhythm, we are talking of the pattern at which this beat takes place. Is either it is regular, hitting normal, or it is irregular. Maybe you have something like this one, two, one, one, two, and it's just scattered like that. So, those are the two types of rhythm abnormalities. It could be regular or irregular. Alright, so for us to have a better understanding of dysrhythmias, there are different types, various types of dysrhythmias. However, I have succeeded to try and classify them according to where they are generated from. That is abnormal impulse generation, the site where it is generated from. Now, the first one we have here is sinus dysrhythmias. Sinus dysrhythmias are abnormal rhythm and rate of the heart that originate from the sinoatrial node. Please, for better understanding of this video, you can check conducting system of the heart. It will explain better some of these structures. Now, what are the dysrhythmias under sinus dysrhythmias? First of all, we have sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia means that the sinoatrial node releases electrical impulses at a slower rate than normal at a rate of less than 60 beats per minute. Normally, this occurs during sleep. However, in some disease conditions, it could also occur. The next one we have is sinus tachycardia. Sinus meaning that it originates from the SA node and tachycardia meaning fast heart rate or fast heartbeat more than normal. So meaning that the sinoatrial node releases electrical impulses faster than normal at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. Now these two dysrhythmias are regular in nature. The second one is atrial dysrhythmias. Under atrial dysrhythmias we have premature atrial complexes or contractions, we have atrial flutter and we have atrial fibrillation. Now, when we talk about atrial dysrhythmias, we are talking about abnormal electrical impulses that originate from the atrium, the atrium or the atria, and there are three number. We have premature atrial complexes or contractions. Now, what is this? It means that before normal heart beats, the atrium releases its own impulse prematurely before normal heartbeat and that's why it's called premature atrial contraction or complex it is usually irregular in reading pattern it is always irregular the next one is atrial flutter atrial flutter means that the heart the, the atrium releases electrical impulses more than normal in fact it releases at a rate of 250 to 40 beats per minute and the reading is regular. Now, the next one is atrial fibrillation. The heart rate is very, very fast. The atrium releases electrical impulses at a very, very fast rate at a rate of 300 to 600 beats per minute but the problem is it is irregular. Both of them are a problem as you can see. Alright, the major difference between the flutter and the fibrillation is irregularity. Flutter is usually regular, while atrial fibrillation is irregular. 
Now the next one is ventricular dysrhythmia. What does this mean? It means that the ventricles generate abnormal beats. It could be premature, premature ventricular contractions, which is usually irregular. Then you could have a ventricular tachycardia, meaning a very fast uh, rate of impulse release by the ventricles. And normally, ventricular tachycardia is irregular at a rate of 100 to 200 beats per minute. Then we have ventricular fibrillation. Now, in this case, the ventricles release impulses at a very fast rate, greater than 300 beats per minute, and it is very irregular. It is irregular, it is unsynchronized, it is highly disorganized, all in fibrillation. And this is the most fatal of all of them. If not taken seriously or treated, the person is likely to lose his or her life. Lastly, we have the AC stone, which talks about there is no pulse rate, there is no heartbeat, there is no respiration. And if care is not taken, this one is also fatal if no proper intervention is carried out. Now, the fourth one is junctional dysrhythmias. Junctional dysrhythmias here, we are talking about abnormal electrical impulses that originate from the AV node. Or we say AV junction, that's AV node. You can check the video on conducting system for better understanding of this. So, junctional dysrhythmias deals with dysrhythmias that originate from the AV node. The first one we have is premature junctional complexes or premature junctional contractions. Here, the AV node releases impulses just before the normal sinus rhythm and that is not supposed to be that's a disorder it is irregular in pattern that is in rhythm another one we have is junctional rhythm meaning that the AV node is the one taking the place of the pace is, is like the pacemaker in the heart no more the sinoatrial node so the AV node is the one you know doing on the whole beating and it beats at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute now we could have junctional bradycardia which means lower than 40 beats per minute and we could have junctional tachycardia meaning that greater than 60 beats per minute another one we have finally here is av nodal reentry tachycardia first of all just break these words for simple understanding atrioventricular nodal that is coming up from the atrioventricular node and we have re-entry tachycardia meaning that the AV node releases electrical impulses which is not supposed to be releases electrical impulses at a fast rate tachycardia and not just releasing it to the atrium for contraction it releases it and that impulse is, goes round and round the atrium and only few gets contacted to the ventricles so this is just about the abnormalities of generation that causes dysrhythmias. The next one we'll be looking at is conduction abnormalities, which forms another aspect of dysrhythmias. All right. We'll be looking at conduction abnormalities. This is another class of dysrhythmias. In conduction abnormalities, you have um, impulses coming from the sinoatrial node, and when on getting to the AV node, there is a blockage which could be partial or complete, that's total. And the degree of conduction from the AV node gives us this classification of heart blocks. We have the first degree atrioventricular block, second degree atrioventricular block type 1, and we have second degree atrioventricular block type 2, and we have the third degree atrioventricular block. Now, in the first degree AV block, 
all the impulses coming from the AV node passes successfully to the AV bundle. However, it goes at a slow rate than normal. So that's just every every impulse passes through, but at a slow rate. Now the second degree AV block type one, which is also called wind box or Mobis type one. Now in this case, what happens is that all the impulses coming from the sinusoidal node get to the AV node and slowly they pass through the to the AV bundle. However, maybe just one or two of the impulses, very very minute, is not able to go. So is a reduction in impulses from the first one. However, in the second type, second degree heart block or Mobis type 2, all the impulses coming from the sinusoidal node gets to the AV node. On reaching the AV node, only few, like 50 to 60 percent, are able to pass over to the AV bundle. The remaining are not able to go through. So that's partial AV block. But in the third degree, is a full blown AV block. It is complete. AV um, impulses come from the sinusoidal node. On getting to the AV node, there is no transmission at all. No transmission of impulses to the AV bundle. And this comes about, this summarizes all we you know about the conduction abnormalities. So, this is the end of this video. Please, if you're not subscribed, do well to subscribe for more educational videos. And I want to thank you for listening.